Ah, yes! Let's see what's on TV! What the... Is that Angry Joel? What the hell is this? <laughs> Yeah, fuck yeah! Well, at least I like the vocalist! Let's do that shot! It's the darkness! Touching me! No, not that one! The super-powered one, whose power is only being held in check by love! Whatever! For those of you who don't know, The Darkness is not a new IP. It's actually a comic book from Top Cow. He's a powerful character. He's like Spawn in a lot of ways. The Darkness has even gone toe-to-toe -to -toe with the likes of Batman, even Superman. One punch causing Supes' lip to bleed. Now the good thing is, you don't have to have played the original to know what the hell is going on in The Darkness 2. There's a sort of previously on explanation at the beginning. So two years have passed and you are Jackie Estacado, the head of the New York mob. You've suppressed the darkness as you feel responsible for your girlfriend Jenny's death. But life manages to go on. You got women, money, power, and henchmen. That is, until the Brotherhood rolls up and crashes the party. Remember us from the candy club? Well, do you? Sure he does. Trust me, ladies. I wish I did. <laughs> Oh shit! Jack, get down! Now the Brotherhood are a group who knows about the power of the darkness. And they want to harness it for themselves. So they're here to take it from you and make your life a living hell until you give it up. Making matters worse, Jenny's death continues to haunt you. Now I was actually surprised at how entertaining the story was. This is mainly because the characters are well written. The dialogue is smart and sometimes funny, especially your good fellas. Hey Jackie, check out the rack on the brunette to your right. That's his left, dipshit. And there's actually emotion in the narrative. You're something else, you know that? And you look like shit, you know that? I'm gonna make you some of that meatloaf you love so much. I'll have it for you in a couple of hours. Nice home-cooked meal is what you need. You're the best. Bet your ass I am. Now Jenny, who was murdered in the first game, actually appears as a main character in this one. You keep seeing visions of her. You keep chasing those visions around. You have dream sequences, and all of them are really, really engaging and heartfelt. I don't know what this is, and I don't fucking care. I think about you every day, Jenny. Every minute of every day. You're so sweet, Jackie. Did I ever tell you that? You act all tough, but deep down, you're all heart, you know? They were effective perhaps more so than some of the gimmicks in the original. So the story is well worth the ride, but how about the gameplay? Well, the sequel is a lot more fast-paced and brutal. I mean, for Christ's sakes, are you gonna pull a dude's spine out of his asshole while holding that motherfucker upside down? I feel nothing! Now thankfully you're invulnerable during these kill type animations and thank god because you're literally frozen in place and you would get shot the hell up if you weren't. 
Now to compare with the original, there are still brutal kills there, but that game focused a lot more on freedom and atmosphere. <laughs> Hell, you could even watch the entire To Kill a Mockingbird with your girlfriend on TV while you both sit on a couch okay. together, sharing a moment. Of course, I would have preferred to share a heavy metal music video with her. Oh yeah, now that's a touching moment. You want the remote, don't you, mister? Uh-uh. No, my apartment, my TV, my remote. Sheesh, bitch. And there was a bunch of other cool videos like that on television which you can watch in the game. But what that ended up doing is it made the original feel more like an open-ended adventure with puzzles and with gunplay. Here, the sequel is more linear and traditional, but it's immediately easier to get into. Though I do wish we would've got a little bit more extras, like why not keep the television? It was awesome. Now quad wielding works surprisingly well. Jackie can dual wield two one-handed weapons and still also have the darkness tentacles over each of his shoulders. These things can create havoc. You can impale people, slash them in half, throw objects, cut pesky wires in half to shut lights off that hinder your darkness powers. And of course, for every kill you make, you can then feed on their hearts to replenish your health. Feed me the hearts. That's metal. Also, instead of summoning different types of darklings like you could in the first game, you only get just one. But he's got a more set personality and he plays a bigger role in the game at the end. And while you can't control him, he basically acts as sort of a uh, uh, objective marker, telling you where to go, even giving you ammo, and disabling enemies so that you can rip them apart here and there. Now when I first saw this game at E3, I was put off a little bit by the graphical style. It's a bit more colorful and bright for a game called The Darkness, but actually after playing it, it was a, a welcome change. It actually stays a little bit more true to its comic book form. Another really good thing to mention is the voice acting. It's all really top notch. From the anxiety stricken but always interesting Johnny. Jackie, Jackie, wait. What, what's the matter? Uh, 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 this envelope, uh, uh, where did you say you got it again? Off some dead guy that was paid to kill me. Oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. Something wrong, Johnny? Uh, nothing, um, uh, couldn't be them. Hey, um, I, I, I gotta do some more research. Uh, good luck in your killing spree! Me and the boys will take him to the zoo while you're gone. Retards like the zoo. Let's go, Vinny. To, of course, the man himself, Mike Patton, reprising his role as the voice of the darkness. Perhaps the coolest motherfucking sound and evil voice in all of gaming. <laughs> Project the darkness. Never! I'm done with you! Not let them take me! Fuck you. I'm not with my puppet. You will do my bidding! Give me one good reason! You will do my bidding! Now the only problem that starts to creep in is from being a little bit more traditional. After the Brotherhood show up, the enemies basically stay the same. Nothing really new is thrown at you besides soldiers with lights and slightly superpowered enemies with shields. Levels are a little bit more predictable, they're just basically focused on getting you through that corridor to the next boss battle. Thankfully though, those boss battles are a ton of fun. Nothing too out of the ordinary, but they're serviceable. How the hell do you metal heads keep your hair in one place? <laughs> Gotta use a rubber band.
Uh. However, as I was saying, you'll wish that there was uh, a level in the game that's different from the rest. Sort of like Star Breeze's opening, that car scene, that car chase scene. That shit was awesome. You see, in between missions, you'll split your time between this interesting subplot having to do with a mental institution that I won't spoil for you, it's really good, or you'll spend time hanging out in your ultra swanky mansion. But unfortunately, there's not much to actually do here aside from talking with a few people, checking out your trophies, and playing with the faucets. Hey, <laughs> let's see the maid clean up after this. Once again, an area where the TV could have helped. Some sections has you playing as the Darkling once or twice, but something else would have been appreciated. Like, how about a mini game playing that uh, world conquering board game with uh, Adolf Hitler? We shall fight on the beaches. We shall fight on the landing grounds. We shall fight in the fields and in the streets. Oh, wait, that was church. Damn it! If you're tired of military shooters lately in the FPS, The Darkness 2 will be a breath of fresh air. It's just a shame it's on the shorter side. The original Darkness took me about 10 to 12 hours to complete. This one only took about 6, maybe 7 hours. And I was relic hunting. Which I should mention, these collectibles are actually interesting. The first collectibles that I actually want to seek out and collect. Each one has a really interesting story. Whoa, hold up! Whoa, 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 whatever you do, for the love of God, don't ever let that blade touch your skin. I mean, what do you think you're doing bringing that here? Well, okay, yes, 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 this is your house, so I guess you can do whatever the fuck you want. But remember, I'm here to help you figure if what you want to do is actually something you don't want to do. Trust me when I say, using that knife falls into the latter category. That's a furba, which on its own is dangerous enough to a guy like you. A furba's blade will pin a demon to the spot. Once that's done, only the person who shanked the demon can free it. Now, it is possible that a normal furba wouldn't be strong enough to bind you. But this is the Trinity. Its blade was forged from the three nails that crucified Christ. Not normal! Extremely not normal! If you'd cut yourself with the Trinity, you would have been paralyzed. The only person who could have set you free would have been you, which you wouldn't be able to do because you would be paralyzed. Do you see the paradox here? Come to think of it, you ever decide to touch this stuff, just, just, just ask first. All right, nothing big, just a simple, hey, Johnny, is it okay if I touch this? And I'll say, sure, Jackie. That absolutely will not trap you in a never-ending loop of torment. Or I'll say the other thing. You know, no! It makes me want to at least play through the game again in maybe game plus mode, which the game has, to find all of them. They're so cool that it's a shame that more wasn't done with these in gameplay mechanics. I mean, imagine what you could do with a, a knife made from the nails that crucified the Lord. Or demon statuettes with evil powers. Or the ashes of Cain from Cain and Abel, the first murderer. Some pretty crazy shit. Chances are that dark energy I'm picking up is a taint left by the darkness. Meaning this isn't just any thumbscrew, it's an evil thumbscrew, so it hurts more. Maybe. Oh, that's still not enough. Okay. Fine, fine, fine. This is the infamous Black Thumb. In 1631, it single-handedly ripped and raped its way across the English countryside, leaving behind a trail of bloody bastards and broken dreams. Never has the world seen such carnage. Pray it never will again. Yes, I am being sarcastic. No, I don't want you to kill me. Okay, I'll shut up now. Now, in addition to the Game Plus mode, there's also a multiplayer mode called Vendettas that has you control one of four unique characters that have their own piece of the darkness power. Now, this mode, along with the Hitless mode, will give you more interesting story bits, but it's only gonna last you maybe about an additional two to three hours on top of the campaign. How we doing? <laughs> is feeding. Uh, so that's a good thing? Yeah. Unless it's feeding on you. Yes. Yes, it's a good thing. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, good talk. Let me know when you found Johnny Powell, all right? It's a unique campaign in its own, but the overall experience of the entire game feels a little too short. Then you compound that with a very frustrating and abrupt ending. No! No! 
Yes, this game has one of those. It's like Digital Extremes is on their hands and knees begging 2K Games to make The Darkness 3. And that that's where all the cool sh** will happen. Perhaps it'll maybe just be a DLC mode since there's a downloadable content section there with nothing in it really yet. Who knows? So it's time now for the final verdict. The Darkness 2 earns a 7 out of 10. It's a great game. And it's held back only by its relatively short length. If you're into anti-hero stories, the darkness powers, or just want to break from military FPS shooters, I'd say this one is right up your alley. It is bare minimum worth a rental or a buy when the price goes down, so keep this one in mind. Same with the original Darkness, which could be bought for like $10 used, and neither of these two games have an online pass, so kudos there. Defiance means nothing. It is a mistake. Digital Extremes takes a franchise that Starbreeze originally did a great job on. And while they compromise some of it, the original's more open-ended adventure, with a more traditional first-person shooter-like mindset, they do end up expanding on all the important parts that matter, making this a faster, more brutal, focused experience. They managed to do the darkness justice. And this is a franchise that I do hope to see more of. Maybe bring heaven and hell into the fold. The battle between darkness and light, sort of like Spawn Redeemer style. Until then, I'll see you guys on the next Angry Joe Show.